Welcome back to my channel. I'm Beth, creator of dryitcanit.com. Today we're going to do something really unusual and we are going to make sweet corn jelly. Yep, you heard that right. It's simple, it's delicious. Uh, it's sweet corn season where I live and for most of us and that season will be coming into an end soon. I canned some sweet corn yesterday and I will be doing a video on that in the near future. But with those cobs, after I cut the corn off, I'm going to uh, make sweet corn jelly. Super simple, super easy, so I hope you watch the video. So what I started with was uh, a dozen ears of corn that I had already cut the, the corn off and canned yesterday. I put these in the refrigerator. What you wanna do next is you wanna put these in a, a pan with about, uh, maybe two quarts, quart and a half of water, and you wanna bring that to a boil and then turn it down to simmer and let it simmer for 40 or 45 minutes. It's going to reduce in volume and that's okay. I actually used an Instant Pot because I didn't want the steam and it's a warmer summer day. And what I did is I put four cups of water in my Instant Pot and then I let my Instant Pot run for 20 minutes and then I let it come down to pressure by itself. And what I have, is four cups of broth, corn broth, I guess, if you will, which could be used for soups also. So the next step to make the jelly is to strain this broth to get all the particles out. Now I'm using a fine mesh screen, and that probably is sufficient, but you might have some floating particles. I'm going to take a flour sack dish towel, and I'm going to line my my uh, screen with that just to kind of drain it a little bit more and then I'm just going to pour I have to set this so you can see I suppose um, I'm just going to pour this liquid into my container and that will let it strain you can see that it's still hot you can see the seam coming up and I want to make sure yeah, my container will hold all that but there are pieces of corn and I just want to let that drain by itself I don't really want to squeeze that out at all um, but I can pick this up at the end and then let the last bits of liquid drain. So once this is completely drained, I'm going to put this in a pot and I'm going to heat it with a box of Sure Gel used for jelly. I'm going to bring that to a boil and then I'm going to add some sugar. Once that's done, and I will show you the steps as we go, we're going to put that in my canner, which is currently heating and we're going to water bath it for 15 minutes. And it's going to be that simple, and it's going to be delicious. So stay tuned as I walk through the steps. Okay, I'm bringing my corn broth, if you will, to a boil. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna wait and make sure this boils. It was boiling a second ago, there we go. I'm going to add all of my pectin, which was one package for three cups of broth. Um, I don't know what else to call this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir this and I'm going to let it come to a boil and then I'll be adding my sugar. So I'll be back in a second. All right, hopefully you can see that my pectin is boiling. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add all of my sugar at one time and I'm going to stir this constantly until it gets to a full boil. And I'm going to let it get to a hard boil and then I'm going to boil it for five minutes. I'm just gonna take my juice there and get the rest of that sugar out. Now, I had four cups of broth, so I adjusted this recipe so that I could do four, four, use four cups in my, in my uh, recipe when I'm making this. But the basic recipe is three cups of your corn broth, three cups of sugar, and one box of sure gel. So I adjusted mine again because I had four cups of uh, of the broth and then four cups of sugar and then I added uh, you know the equivalent amount of sure gel basically a third more of the sure gel than the recipe calls for so I'm going to let this come to a hard boil and when that happens then I'm going to put this into my hot jars which are already in my canner and are already heated and then we're going to prepare to water bath this so I will be back after I get this to a full boil and after I let it boil for five minutes. You can see I've got a good boil going now with the sugar and the sure gel, and I'm just going to let that boil for five minutes, stirring constantly. Once that's done, I'm going to remove this from the heat. There will be some foam, and I'll be removing that foam. So stay tuned. All right, everything's boiled for five minutes, and I don't know that I'm going to be able to get to show you this, 
but the little bit of foam that's on there kind of coagulates a, a little bit like you would expect fat. You can kind of pull it to one side. You don't want to stir that in. You simply want to take some kind of a spoon and get that out. So let's see if I can get you to see this maybe. You can kind of see it's almost milky-like. You don't want to stir that in. So just remove it, kind of push it gently to the side, drain your broth off as best you can, and then remove as much of this foam as you reasonably can. You will have some on the side of your pan, um, and I really don't have that much this time, but it's just sort of a milky substance, um, which probably is kind of from the starches from the corn, I'm thinking. But I just want to remove, maybe you can see a little bit on the black spoon there, you can see what that's like. And it's just a little bit gloppy, and you really don't want that in your jelly. So that's why I am going to work to remove as much of this as I possibly can. Um, and then I think when I have that mostly out, what I'm going to do is grab my strainer again. Actually, I'm going to get a smaller one. I will be right back. All right, to get that last little bit of, of foam, if you will, out of here, what I did is I took a smaller screen strainer and I'm just going to pour all of this back into my measuring cup. And I was going to pour all of this into the measuring cup anyway, simply because it's much easier to pour that into a jar. I don't want to overflow here. So I'm going to take that like so, and you can see probably maybe the foam that's in there. Got that out. And I still have now a little bit more than four cups of liquid because remember I added all that sugar. So my next step, and you can see I have a yellow jelly it's getting ready to set up. My next step is to get my jars out of my canner while they're hot and fill the jars and put the lids on them. So stay tuned again. I have my hot jars and what I'm going to do now is pour liquid to within a quarter inch to a half inch. And I got a big blob of something there, which is that jelly likely. And then I'm going to wipe off the rims. Now, generally I'm going to use vinegar to wipe off the rims with anything that's sweet or greasy. Jelly is the one exception. I generally will take and use just a wet rag for that because I don't want any sign of vinegar inside of my uh, jelly. So um, I have my jelly there and I can put in just a touch more. I think I'm going to end up with about five or six jars total on this. Four cups of broth and a couple, cup, well, quite a bit of sugar, double the sugar. But we'll see how, how much I end up with since I had adjusted the recipe. So I'm gonna take a wet rag and I'm going to wipe off the rim really well. Um, obviously this is really sticky because you have a lot of uh, sugar in it and I don't want that to be a problem with sealing my jars. I'm going to put my lids on and then I'm going to put my screw band on only until it's finger tight. Now remember, with today's lids, if they're newer, you do not have to put them in hot water to start with. Check the back of your box because a lot of us still have some lids from the previous years where they did have to be hot and they did have to be uh, um, hot when you put them on. Mine don't anymore because I have the newer ones. So I'm simply gonna take and fill the rest of my jars. I'm going to put these in my water bath, or in my canner to water bath and I will show you what the final steps are for that in a moment. All right, I'm using a Presto electric canner and I absolutely love it. But with my canner, I need to have the equivalent of either two quarts or four pints to make sure that my pressure is there. So I know that two of these half pints are going to be one pint, two pints, three pints. And since I don't have the equivalent of four pints, I take a pint jar, I just fill it with water, and I put that in the middle, and that gives me the equivalent amount that I need for my canner to work properly. So keep in mind what your directions are for your particular canner. But in order to water bath, I set my timer at water bath, and then I had boiling water, and I basically want to fill this until my jars are about uh, one inch covered with hot water. And I'm not going to have quite enough hot water, but I've got another kettle going, so I'll be back in a second. All right, I'm going to add the rest of my hot water. And again, I want my jars to be covered by a good inch. Now, I'm not as concerned about this top one, but I definitely want the water up to there. 
but I also have a full mark on my canner, and I know that I can't go past that. But my half pints are covered by a good half inch, or by a good inch there. So I'm going to put my cover on my canner, and then I am going to water bath this for 10 minutes. Now, it'll be five minutes if you're at sea level. I've had to adjust for my altitude, so it's going to be 10 minutes. When this is done, I'm going to let the pressure canner cool on its own, and then um, I will be back probably tomorrow morning to show you what our jelly looks like. Six pint, <clears throat> excuse me, six half pints of corn cob jelly successfully sealed. Uh, it's a nice light color. The jelly definitely held up. Uh, I did open one. It's delicious. It's really sweet, and you do have the undertastes of of uh, corn. You also have a little bit of a lemon taste with it, so it's really good. Um, now, corn cob jelly might seem like something kind of funny for your family. Uh, BLTs, when you never had them before, might have seemed kind of funny. Uh, or cornbread might have seemed funny. But I'm just putting mine on a piece of toast this morning to enjoy it. You could use this as a marinade, adding some more savory seasonings. Uh, you might add it to a cocktail sometime. Um, it might be good as a meat glaze also. So try corn cob jelly. It's a great way to use your corn cobs when you are uh, corn, canning your corn. So again, the recipe is below. I think this is delicious. Mmm, so sweet. Definitely could use a little bit less sugar if you don't like really sweet. The taste of the corn is there. It's really kind of a fun, different thing. I think I might use this as a glaze on some pork chops tonight also. So, happy canning. I hope you subscribe to my channel for more recipes and how-tos. Thanks for watching.